hang out. So I was going to stay out with those guys. They were going to go do some super sober. I already had this plan already in mind. And I went to go to Workhouse present Sweat with Finn Your Hands, which I have up in the screen. It was at this new club called Workhouse, which is on Brick Lane. Now, I remember seeing this featured a few places. I saw pictures of it, but I couldn't actually picture where it was at on Brick Lane because Brick Lane's a long, you know, it's a long street, loads of nice, cool little, you know, um, Indian restaurants and whatnot, vintage stores, all the usual stuff you associate with Brick Lane. But the clubs are pretty dead set in terms of where they are, in terms of, you know, next to Truman Brewery, there's a couple further down to the end next to Commercial Street that people don't go to, I think it's called a pair or something, but I couldn't picture where this workhouse place is where it was meant to be. So I was walking up and down, couldn't figure it out. And then only when I went to the the bit that leads up to uh cafe 1001 there's a little gate there with a security guard there was, you know where they serve the burgers and stuff. i was like hey where's this workhouse place he's like oh it's upstairs so this whole time i was walking up and down and even on the google maps it shows that workhouse is like further down the road but it's not it's actually a room upstairs you know at, on top of cafe 1001 it's essentially another room in cafe 1001 if you've ever been to brick lane you'll know what i mean by cafe 1001 it's like one of the main little spots there it's got like a restaurant a little bar thing there's a club there people hang out blah 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 so i finally went up there went up there and it was interesting to go up there because it was a gave me flashbacks of why i stopped promoting because when i went up there i think it might have been like because i left the party quite late so it might have been like 11 30 12 or something i got there and it was empty like empty empty and it got me flashbacks of like how my bum used to clench when i used to promote my own parties in dawson and how excruciatingly tough it is which is why i have so much sympathy and so much respect for people who are going out there and putting on nights because look this was an ra pick night right it got all the good buzz that you need to get in terms of putting on nights he had a pretty stellar dj who i think is pretty well regarded and rated he has a really cool long running series that paloma called uh powerhouse um he's also a really prominent um writer um you know runs his label he's got a blog that i used to read you know religiously for a few years because of obviously you know me being obsessed with berlin and stuff and everything concerning club culture around there he writes some really cool articles about that's when some of them might to you know run for a google translate but still just a really solid dude that you'd think would have a lot of pull in terms of getting people to come out on a friday night and especially it being payday yeah you'd think people would be coming out right this is a, it was one of the rare weekends where payday fell on the weekend so even if you got paid the day before or you got paid on the friday you definitely had money for the weekend so you could afford to maybe go out and have a bit of fun and you know let your hair down but it wasn't it wasn't the case the place was absolutely empty when i arrived and i think i might arrive there if i'm thinking correctly it was 11 45 so i gave it time to kind of build up because the club you know the party was on from 10 till 4 a.m and i still got there and it was empty so that shows to me that promoting is still as hard as it's ever been so if you're a punter out there and you're unable to go to events i honestly do think as weird as it sounds i know i've said the opposite in past you know podcast if you can't go to the event just give the way give the ticket away to somebody else don't even try and resell it i do it all the time there's a little um there's a little whatsapp group that we're in now where there's like loads of you know london techno fans and stuff that you know if you want to go to a party but you don't want to go on your own you can kind of link up with people and i'm sure there's other places too you can find on telegram and on discord and stuff little communities or just go on the techno subreddit or the house subreddit whichever one you want to go on and just give the ticket away to somebody i'm sure somebody will like it especially if sometimes i've been, i've done it on twitter too i've just written the, the event so somebody somebody's searching for it they can see it said, hey i've got a free ticket here for somebody want to come dm me and i'll send it to you and just give the ticket away because refunding it, especially considering how tough it is to promote out there, is a bit of a piss take, especially because some of these parties aren't making enough money to break even. It's just difficult to get people out post-pandemic. Things have changed really out there. It's not the same. I know it's still hard to get people out, but it's, things have definitely changed culturally, I feel like, in terms of people deciding to leave their home to go and to go and play or to go and sorry, dance at these sort of parties and clubs like things people's habits and lifestyles are really changed i don't think they'll go back to how they were before i think if anything i've i've always stressed this but i think overall the club landscape we've definitely lost the general punter like the regular guy that's just or regular girl that would go out and hang out and just kind of oh i'm out on friday let me just see what x or y is saying let me see what fabric is saying let me see what venue mt is saying let me see what for that general punt has gone we've lost them so i think now the people that are going out are legit fans so that's a way smaller crowd though you need also gen pop people to also maybe have an interest in you for you to kind of you know sustain that for a long term so it's a bit shaky out there and obviously with the clubs closing blah 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 you know the general stuff so anyway i go there it's a bit, it's a bit empty and then the first thing another thing i want to check is all that i want to check is all first thing i've said that i think i've changed my mind on lineups and set list if you don't see a set list there at the club or they don't produce one, just enjoy your night. 
I think going up and asking somebody, hey, what time is somebody on? I felt kind of gross because I think when I did it, I think I asked somebody behind the decks who was involved with the with the, with the the party who I shared some words with and whatever it may be, words of encouragement or whichever that I could. And I did feel a little bit gross walking away. I'm not going to lie. I did feel like a little bit like a dickhead. Like, why am I asking them what time Finney or Chance is coming on as if the whole party only rests on the value of one person playing? Obviously it does. But it's a bit rude to say. Do you know what I mean? It's not like the, it's not the, um, it's not the polite thing to say um, in that space. I think if someone doesn't produce a set list, sorry, it doesn't produce a DJ set list, whatever, and who's playing what time, you don't see one online, so someone didn't snap on quickly, whatever, maybe, then let it go. Talking about pictures, um, weirdly enough, Workhouse has this thing where they tape your pick camera up when you go. So it's a another club that's trying to recreate this whole Berlin thing about not taking pictures. Personally, for me, I think it's a bit redundant in London overall. I think Fold do it really well in some places, other places do it well, like some of the king parties that we have, like Crossbreed and Verboten when they were, when, when they were here for a bit. Um, but overall, I don't think it works in London. Our punters just don't get it. Um, if anything, it makes people a little bit more anxious when they're on a dance floor. The vibe kind of changes. It's just strange. We don't really vibe with that world. We don't. We haven't really been educated in why that's beneficial, why it matters, why it's necessary. We don't get it. So it just doesn't work. But weirdly enough, I think it did work with this one. I'm not going to lie, especially considering how less, how small the crowd was. I think it kind of added to the fact that people were just ready to just dance and just let themselves go and not really be bothered about what was going on because there was hardly one day in the first place so that was good but then it did start to fill up so a couple, couple of hours passed by and it just started to get a bit busier around 1 a.m so that was pretty decent and um Finn Johansson started end, end up coming on I think about one if not one half one or something around that kind of mark and absolutely smashed it um again I'm a fan of his um in general um it's weird because someone asked me actually what type of music he's playing I was actually quite stumped in terms of genres because you, I would say new disco um, I would say disco, I'd say EBM, electronic body music. I don't know what else I would kind of um, link it to, right? But even just looking at some of the um, people featured, right, on his list of DJs or the, or the cloud, there's so many different kind of artists that kind of span across different spans in terms of who you're trying to touch. So it's kind of hard to kind of pinpoint it. But obviously, luckily, I recorded some clips in there um, so you can kind of see um, or you can kind of hear what the sound was like with Finn Johansson playing. This is obviously not Finn Johansson at the start. This is mostly at the beginning. Um, but some of the DJs are playing that warming up who are fairly good also. I have to kind of point that out. I'm not really sure who was what, who was who on the lineup and stuff. But this is the start of it. And then I'll kind of scrub through so you can see the couple of other bits in the middle as well. Let's play this. <laughs> for a bit. And here. I think that might have been me banging on something but yeah absolutely amazing and also to kind of to bring a little kind of quick point on this the bartenders there were super cool man I, I don't know if this is something that doesn't necessarily happen in those kind of places i'm kind of shocked because usually brick lane you know attendees and people that work in the area are a little bit sketch if you know that area but the bartenders at that club were so cool um um, so one of them made me a really great refreshing drink that I was you know happy to have because it was the last day of me drinking alcohol especially with sober October coming up and yeah I had a blast man so the staff that worked they were pretty cool security guards were also on a, on a good vibe thing so everything was good about that place I'm not going to lie I was just disappointed obviously for people pointing on that not a lot of people turned out for it but talking about that also the one thing that really I think was interesting was that 
obviously I've been to Palomas, right? So I've been to this legendary club in Berlin, which is like on Copa Sator. Um, it's right as you come out there, it's like next to the river. It's kind of like an upstairs thing, right? It's really, really cool. And, it's, and I think it's one of the better clubs in Berlin because it kind of covers a, a wider range of music. It's not just the same what you hear everywhere, like techno, techno, techno. Same like Same Heads, right? You might not like Same Heads. It might be a bit too kitschy if you're a bit too out there, but at least they try to get people in that kind of cover a broad spectrum of art. It's not just the same dark techno, industrial sort of music. So that's why I love um, Paloma. And obviously they... Um, have a lot of house people there and obviously that that can you can kind of say that's my foundation in terms of music dance music education like house disco all that sort of stuff so i kind of lean to that even though i'm obviously you know obsessed with techno also but the problem with people like Afin johansson is that 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 rave that he has on that flipping um what's it called at um at palomas right called powerhouse is legitimately one of the best parties I've been to in a while. Like I've been twice as well. And I want to catch it hopefully another time before the end of the year, or maybe ne the beginning of next year. And it legitimately is the best platform or the best place to kind of see him do his thing or to kind of see why he's such a well-regarded DJ. Because usually you'll have somebody playing with him. It's usually like two people. Um, it's usually just him and somebody else. Like so it's like a back-to-back -back type of affair. And it's a great, um, night because usually he picks people that he feels like you know are like a DJ's DJ somebody that kind of compliments him well somebody just a fan of it's never really that big high ticket people but sometimes you know a big high ticket person who's having a bit of a pop like a synthy can come down right and play and I've listened to the set it's like a seven hour recording of you know of flipping powerhouse with you know flipping Finn Johansson and synthy playing and it's amazing right just peak elite level house music and unfortunately, once you hear that sort of sound in that sort of club, on that sort of sound system, in that city, it's just the perfect representation of what he's trying to do. So when you hear it, try to be replicated in a brick lane club that's a bit weird layout wise, that's upstairs, a really shitty bar, it's a bit, it doesn't really work the same. But I do appreciate them at least trying to do it and make it happen, right? But it just wasn't, it just didn't hit the same way. And again, it's not their fault. It's just that when somebody's intrinsically tied to such an amazing place, like they even got it underneath his name, right? His night powerhouse Paloma, they've even got it then I'm sure the people around it probably did probably had the same you know earth shattering realization that i did when they went to see him play that oh my god it's the greatest i've ever seen in my life and obviously got you know him and got in touch with him in terms of playing there but it's just not the same so that's the only issue i think i have with this sort of nice i think if you came into as a general partner it's one thing but if you came into as a fan of finn johansson it probably isn't the best platform to have seen him but still as somebody who's obsessed with the music obsessed with the scene in general just to hear him play out i didn't fucking care where it was it could be in a car park i would still have fun i still have a way of a time i was sweating dancing my face off until what 4 a.m or 5 a.m or something and then end up coming back home unfortunately i didn't take my bike with me so i ended up having to flip in get an uber back but that was fine you know able to get some fresh air walk a little bit down brick lane um so to make the flipping uber ride home a bit cheaper it's the usual kind of hack i'm sure most of you guys do it too they just kind of walk a bit further out from the main city center to kind of get uh, discounted rates and i was able to kind of get back home pretty sharpish and all all together it worked out well but i'm just some cool people as well in the dance floor so pick up anybody i might have seen there um that was also really enjoyable but yeah overall that was kind of what i spent my weekend doing because of course the next day was the start of october so that was what i kind of got up to if you were watching